GIMP 3 has finally been released. Now, everybody knows that by the standards of current year, GIMP is not good. It doesn't have a shape tool, it doesn't have non-destructive editing, and even people who daily drive Linux distros like Debian criticize GIMP for being outdated in terms of features. But maybe that's all about to change because the major update that GIMP enjoyers have been waiting for over a decade is finally here. Okay, so let's see. New in GIMP 3, non-destructive editing. Okay, let's go. See okay, changes in real time. PSD file exports. Oh, pro quality text. Nice. Organizing your layers has become much easier with the ability to mo <laughs> select multiple items at once. Oh, I'll be very honest. The fact that this feature was added in 2025 is actually a bit concerning. Anyway, color management was improved. Again, updated to GTK3 for modern desktop usage. And finally, a new Wilbur logo. I actually never knew that the GIMP logo was named Wilbur. Why? I would have expected it to be something like Gimpler instead. But I'm going to grab this logo and save it because I'm going to need it for later. But okay, let's install GIMP3. Download by a BitTorrent. Let's download directly. Dude, look at this installation icon. Gimpler is picking out of the box. Ooh, this is the GIMP 3.0 installing screen. Is it just me or is it all like a bit stretched vertically? Like the sun is an oval and so on, but I don't know, maybe it's intended. Customize. Wait, what? You can... When you hit customize, it puts you to the license agreement. Okay, I won't customize then. I'll just install. What? <laughs> if you hit install, it doesn't show you the license agreement, but if you hit customize, it does. But it doesn't matter because GIMP is free and open source, which means that you can do whatever you want with it. You can visit gimp.org slash downloads for free updates. Maybe I'll pick up some free RAM on the way as well. Dude, why is this install taking so long? Okay, we're done. Launch GIMP. Okay, I just want to launch from the icon actually. That is a nice icon, look at that. Too bad I don't use desktop icons. Okay, let's launch GIMP. What kind of it? Ooh, wait, it is the same thing, but the sun is round now, so the installation was stretched out. Okay, so this is GIMP when you just launch it, and you know, it has a bunch of different settings you can change here, but let's be honest, for most of you, this kind of an interface is going to be a bit unfamiliar, but fear not, there is actually another project out there called PhotoGIMP. So essentially what this does is that it makes GIMP look and behave a little bit more like Photoshop. So for example, the tool positions, shortcut keys, and some settings. And this is actually really, really popular, and it's already updated to GIMP 3.0, so let's download this as well. And it's super easy as well, so on Linux, all you have to do is follow these steps, and on Windows, all you have to do is follow these steps, so it's super simple. <laughs> yeah, I know how to install Minecraft skins. Okay, so I installed PhotoP, I mean PhotoGIMP, and now this is what the icon looks like, so let's launch it. Ooh, it looks like... Okay, so this is GIMP. And the challenge for this video is to create the thumbnail of this video in GIMP. But before that, I just want to play around a bit. So let's, uh, let's open an existing image. Actually, you know what? The real challenge is, can I drag and drop into here? Okay, let's drag and drop. Okay, I can. I got a doggy. This is a doggy getting scolded because paid for Adobe software. Let's make it white. Oh, and oh, GIMP. Has, oh, okay, GIMP can do this. I actually kind of like that. I kind of like that. It's simple. Okay, uh, I want the font to be extra bold. And, okay, when you select text, it shows these squares around them instead of, like, recoloring them, which is nice because then I can see the actual color of them. But I gotta admit, it's a bit hard to see, but, I mean, <laughs> this text is a mess right now. So let's put it over here. Let's make it a bit smaller, so... Okay, how do I... Okay, I can scroll. I kind of want to, like, drag, like a slider, you know? So, for example, on Photoshop, what you can do is, you can just slide it from this button here, which is really nice and simple. And you can also resize it by grabbing one of these edges, and if I hold Alt, it resizes from the middle. So, let's see if I can do that on GIMP as well. Okay, so, I select the text, but I cannot drag resize it because it just resizes this box so that's a bit unfortunate 
and I also don't have a slider to resize it from here. I just have to like scroll or click these buttons, which I guess is a downgrade, but it's not a deal breaker yet, but it's just one of those small things that will add a bit of annoyance to the workflow. Okay, we got some text and now I want to add a shadow to this text. Uh, okay, let's see. So in Photoshop, I would click on this layer and add an effect from down here, but it doesn't seem to be here. Effects. Okay, there's no effect button. Okay, that's for this square here. And uh, when I click it, nothing happens. How do I add an effect? Is there like an effects window? Okay, we got filters, light and shadow. Okay, drop shadow. Okay, we got a slight shadow. Let's do opacity max. Did something happen? Okay, blur radius. Let's make it smaller. I feel like the shadow is not really strong. The opacity is maxed out, but it's so weak for some reason. Oh, okay. And just as promised, I can see real-time effects changes, that's nice. Okay, let's say now I want to change this shadow, it's too thick. Uh, so on the previous version of GIMP, you would have been kind of fucked here, because this shadow would have been a part of this text now, you couldn't edit it anymore. But now, when you go to this... Why is this UI so small, man? UI scaling GIMP. Okay, whatever, I cannot find it because it doesn't exist. If you want to change the UI size, you have to like, edit the theme of the application and I don't feel like doing that. So you should be able to click here. There's a drop shadow and you can edit the shadow. So let's put it to something normal like this. Now it's nice and readable and not too obnoxious. Okay, very nice. Maybe let's erase some of this background. So I got the eraser tool. Okay, yeah, we, we, we do be erasing. Okay, now I want to make the eraser a bit smaller. So let's, what? Why is it so weird? Okay, on Photoshop, when I hold the Alt key, I can resize whatever brush I'm using like this. So I can just do this to resize. I'm very glad that you can do the same thing on GIMP, but why is it so like... Why is it so weird? What the hell is this? I have to go up to make it smaller and then it like gets bigger again. What is, what is it doing? What kind of an algorithm is this using? Okay, now let's make a gradient background. Here's the gradient tool. I want a radial gradient. Wait, there's a spiral as well. Okay, let's do a spiral. And let's change the color to... Nauseating headache. Let's make a nauseating headache spiral. Okay. <laughs> this is... Yeah, this this is good. This is perfect. Okay, can I move it around? Uh, okay, not... That's... Okay, maybe I have to move the gradient around. Wait, how do I like reselect the gradient. So for example on Photoshop, if I make a gradient and deselect it, I can always reselect the gradient to change it, but I guess that's something you cannot do in GIMP, so I have to remake the gradient. I want to make it from the middle here. Actually I want to make it from the finger here. So let's put it under the dog. Huh? Where it go? What the fu- wait what? I erased the background. Huh? Wait, do, does the eraser need to be like alpha color or something? No? GIMP, how to erase... How do we erase the transparencies? So I'm not the only one that's struggling with this. Open the layer menu to go to the transparency sub menu and click add. Wow, this automatic caption spoiled the entire video and now this user isn't going to get any watch time. That's unfortunate. Okay, so let's see. Add alpha channel. Now I have to do the entire erasing again? Okay, I'm just going to select it with the magic wand, which is called fuzzy select here. Makes sense. Oh no! It's selecting the cheem's face. Let's turn down the threshold. Hmm, a bit lower. Let's make it really low. Okay. Okay, never mind. Let's make it a bit higher. Let's just add... Oh wait, how do I... What? What just happened? Why did it select like this? Okay, I'll just use the lasso tool to remove this. What? No. No. What? Uh, enter. <laughs> what? Can do this. Okay, lasso tool. And enter. Okay. Now, let's delete this background. <laughs> this looks terrible. <laughs> you know what? Let's, let's change this to use GIMP. And this is the result. This is what happens. And for some reason, there's a T here, but let's just keep it. So this is our first masterpiece made in GIMP. So let's make the thumbnail of this video. Okay, let's get our asset here. Okay, we need to flip it. So how do I flip this? Tools, transform tools, flip. What just happened? 
Oh, this is a tool. <laughs> you just have to click. Okay, let's make it a lot bigger. You save this. Not sure why it disappears for a second when I save. Or apply, rather. Okay, what could be so amazing that it makes the eyes pop out of the eye sockets of this dog? Well, of course, it's GIMP 3.0. Okay, let's resize the text and scroll up. Okay, I actually, I'm not really sure how I feel about having to resize the text area thing as well. I feel like it's nice sometimes and gets in the way the other times. Okay, we got GIMP 3.0. Now, because I'm using Photo GIMP, Maybe I'll paste the photo gimp splash screen here. So I'm gonna put it behind the doggy. Okay, when I transform, it brings it to the front, which is not what I want, actually. I want to see what it's like when it's in the background. Okay, I really wanna see what it's like if it's behind everything. You know what I mean? What? It canceled. <laughs> wow, the scaling operation had a loading bar. That's not good. I have essentially a maxed out setup. Okay, so let's try putting a blur filter on this background. Hit OK. Something... Wait, something has some dirtiness here. I think it's the doggy. Let's see. Let's try to erase these. Yep, that works. With this really weird resizing thing. Now, this text is pretty hard to see, so let's make it white. Oh, this is already better. But I would like to know what it's like if I put a stroke around it. So on Photoshop, I will select the layer, hit effects and stroke. And then I get a nice stroke. I can even make it a gradient, for example, or a pattern. And I can resize it and everything. And I use the stroke effect constantly. So let's see how I can do this on GIMP. Okay, so because last time I couldn't find the effects button from down here, I'm pretty sure I have to select the text and then go up to one of these menu buttons here. So what about filter? Hmm, I can't find stroke. Maybe it's under colors? Well, of course it's not under colors. Tools? No. Oh, text? No. Layer? Wait, how do I stroke this text? Okay, I'm going to look at a tutorial. If I click on it. Oh, you have to right click for the stroke tool. Alpha to selection. Never mind. You can see that we've got the outline of the text selected. What? 10 pixels is fine for me in this example, according to your canvas size. Huh? Then let's create a new layer. New the layer? The layer is active. No. New color, I'll just use red. No. Bucket fill tool. No. And left click on all selection. No. No. No, I don't want to do that. What? There's no way. Wait, no. Didn't it say pro text? Okay, game 3.0 released. Highlights. Pro quality text just got easier. Style your text. Apply outline, shadows, bezels. Okay, how do I apply an outline? GIMP3, apply outline to text. How do I add outline to text in GIMP3.0? Oh, okay, okay. So I select the text, I pick outline and field. Let's make it red just to make it visible. Line width 10. Okay, but it's inside it right now. I want it to be outside. So if I do 20, it's going to like cover the text eventually. Okay, how do I make the outline then field outside the text? So it would be an actual outline, not inline. Please, tutorial, show me. Now let's align it horizontally and then... Oh, maybe I skipped that step. Okay, I watched the entire video and there is no way to make the outline actually outside. Oh, this is so... It's so close yet so far, but fine, I like your tutorial. And I like the previous tutorial as well. So I cannot stroke text, and I'm not going to use the double layer method, because not only is it just a really backwards way of doing it, but it's also not... I cannot edit it afterwards. So since I have to make the thumbnail of this video in GIMP, I'm just going to... I'm just going to go without a stroke. I have to give it up. Okay, let's add the GIMP logo now of Gimpler. I mean Wimbler. I'm gonna place this. Okay, now I'm also gonna put the Photoshop logo here. How do I rotate? Okay, Shift R. Okay, this is kind of weird. So I click on this layer, I hit Shift R to rotate, but it starts rotating the text instead. Okay, I just have to select it by clicking here, I guess then. Well, that works, that's kind of annoying. Okay, now I have this red line here, and I want to remove the white background. You know what? I'll do it by selection tools, color select, white. And I'll delete all the white from here. Never mind. Maybe I can... Okay, I don't know. Maybe that's good enough. And I wanna... What? The selection doesn't move along with that. Now I want to squish it a bit. 
Okay, Photoshop is now crossed out because GIMP3 is the Photoshop killer. You're going bankrupt, Photoshop. Linux users are going to switch over to GIMP. No more money. It's over for you, Adobe. Okay, we're getting somewhere with this thumbnail. Okay, we're getting some... Oh my god, please let me select GIMP. Ah! So if you click into the hole of this P, it's going to select the background instead of the text. I mean, that's one way of doing it. This is really annoying. I have to click from here. Okay, whenever I want to add a new layer, it asks me all of this stuff. Maybe I can like shift click or something. Okay, wow. Shift click instantly makes a layer. I'm just that intuitive. Okay, how do I delete a layer? Okay. Okay, apparently deleting a layer with the delete key or backspace doesn't do anything. Okay, I'm trying to edit this gradient. It says click select drag move. Okay, I'm trying to drag this, but nothing happens. Clicking and dragging does nothing. Okay, a tutorial showed that I have to do this instead. So I just do, I'll just make a background. Not sure why, not sure why it has these boxes all around. Okay, yep. What the fuck? Why does it look like that? It's supposed to look like this. Like the colors I chose are these. Linear RGB percept. Okay, now it's correct. Wait, what? Okay. If I make this gradient, this is on here, then I have the layer effects gradient here. But now, if I move the layer, the effect disappears, and I cannot edit this gradient anymore. What are these names? Aneurysm. Metallic something. Well, somebody definitely had some fun with the gradient namings, like, probably 20 years ago. Okay, I click on this, and I press control, and it, like, disappears up here, for whatever reason. But if I drag it a bit, and then hit control, then it starts snapping. What the fuck is this? Wow, this export is slow. Okay, I have finished the thumbnail. And it's time for the grand reveal, so... Here it is, my first thumbnail made in GIMP. I think it's pretty okay. I'm kind of happy with it. But okay, it's time for the conclusion. So, obviously, I was able to make a thumbnail in GIMP. But I also discovered that there are certain limitations that I'm not the biggest fan of. So, there is still no shape tool. I didn't need the shape tool this time, but I do use the shape tool from time to time. And there is no real stroke effect, which is something that I use all the time. Not only that, but the performance was pretty bad. Like, yeah, it was usable, but I also have a 4090 and a 7950X CPU. Like, performing certain operations also has some graphical glitches and so on. So, in conclusion, GIMP 3.0 definitely made GIMP much more powerful than it used to be. And GIMP is very much usable, except when it comes to certain specific workflows, which unfortunately are also extremely common for myself. So the real question I have is, why would I use GIMP? when something like PhotoP exists, which is browser-based, has way more features, and is also much more performant than GIMP. But let's say you want an installable application, not a browser-based one, and you want it to be free and open source. Well, Krita also exists. Okay, so I haven't really used Krita, but let's try it out. Let's add some text. Okay, this is what it looks like on Krita, I guess. Okay, apparently you have to click on layer style, and there you go, there's a stroke here. Let's make the size, Okay, that's kind of... Okay, Okay, that, there is some lag when it comes to Krita and the stroke as well, but... But there you go! Krita also has stroke. Oh my god, this is laggy. Okay, just as a comparison, this is PhotoP. Okay, I made the text gigantic. This is how fast PhotoP is. And this is Photoshop. Native Photoshop clearly has the best performance. Okay, so that was me checking out Kim 3.0 and making a thumbnail in it. And overall, I think this is a huge step forward, and GIMP users are going to be very happy to receive this update. And maybe I'll be using GIMP myself as well from time to time, but I don't know, for the time being, if I'm not using Photoshop, then I'm going to be using PhotoP or something like that instead, so. Anyway, if you've already tried out GIMP 3, then let me know how your experience was. And if you want to see similar videos in the future, you can let me know and subscribe. And yeah, that's it. So see ya.